originally lived in Washington, D.C. after I went to college there and stayed for 30 years, then moved out to Rehoboth Beach, Delaware, because um, I was working from home and could live anywhere. And my partner um, decided he could move out there as well, so we had, had a weekend place here, and we just did it full time for about seven years. Then a year and a half ago, um, I decided to move down here to Fort Lauderdale. My partner and I have been together for 29 years, almost 30 years. Been HIV positive for about four years now, but actually knew 30 years ago. In 1985, I took a experimental um, HIV test that a fellow that I worked with at Georgetown University. Um, her husband was developing this test at NIH. I took his test and I was positive on that test, but immediately took a commercial test and it was negative on that. So I, you know, you know, stupidly chalked it up to, you know, a false positive on the first test, but turns out it wasn't. Um, so, you know, I went for years and years with no symptoms at all. 2009, I ran the New York Marathon and thought I was in great shape. And shortly after that, I started to have problems. Um, my memory was fading, couldn't remember things. Um, started to lose a ton of weight, and I thought it was from running, but, you know, couldn't, at January, I couldn't run, couldn't exercise, couldn't do anything anymore. Um, you know, started losing weight. I knew something was wrong, but basically kept going to a nurse practitioner who never suggested an HIV test. But you know, I'm smart enough, I'm a pharmacist. I could have asked for one, um, but I didn't. Started to pass out at home. I just hit the floor. My partner put me to bed. Middle of the night, somehow I was middle of the living room and passed out there. I guess he heard me. Um, and called the rescue squad and off I went to the hospital in the hospital for 10 days and remember very little of it. Um, except for three doctors standing at the foot of my bed telling me I had full-blown AIDS. Um, turned out I had pneumocystis pneumonia. I don't think they thought I'd make it that first night. Um, and, you know, I didn't see anything, but I know I had a near-death experience because everything changed. Um, for Some for the better, some for the worse. I flew a lot for work and I was petrified totally petrified every time I'd get on a plane. Afterwards, no big deal. Um, hated seafood. My choice of foods totally changed. My partner, he's having trouble accepting that I'm HIV positive. Told me early on that he'd never have sex with me again, um, which he hasn't. No, if he thought I'd been you know, messing around on him. Um, and if I did, it was very seldom and never unsafe. I really think I got it from a boyfriend back in 1984, who subsequently has died of AIDS um, in, in the early 90s. Um, not a partner, just really a boyfriend. We never lived together. So I still care for deeply. And I took the experimental test before I met my current partner. Shortly after, I'd met him. And, and he knew I was positive on that test, um, but also knew I was negative on the commercial test. So I guess he thought false positive as well. He's been tested all along. Unfortunately, you know, I stuck my head in the sand and never got tested again after that. He's negative. He's never, he never got it from me. Um, they took the HIV test that night in the hospital. Um, and my, they told my partner before I knew. Um, he didn't tell me. And, and he was in the room with me when, when they did test me. So I was a pretty sick puppy. And, you know, Went right back to work as soon as I got out of the hospital and called my boss and she said, I talked to you last week. I'm like, I couldn't remember any of that. I work for Johnson & Johnson, makers of Persista, a popular HIV drug which sells over $200 million per year. They also manufacture other drugs used for HIV. They want to sell uh, us their drugs, they just don't want us to work for them. Did oncology work of cancer care, um, and they had the meeting. At the end of the meeting, my boss, Marilyn Peltier, um, told me um, that she wanted to see me in the office in Horsham, Pennsylvania on, on Monday. She had to fly in for the meeting, and I drove in. I said, you know, something stinks, and really reminded me of the movie Philadelphia. Um, so I called HR, my HR rep, Aaron Bittenbinder again, and she wasn't available. And I got there early enough. I went by her office. She wasn't there. and. Um, 
they called her and she said she'd call into the meeting, which she called into 20 minutes late. Earlier told HR that I had AIDS um, just because I wanted some protection in case the company found out and wanted to do something to me. It was discrimination. I believe she was trying to fire me. I don't know if it was her or somebody above her, um, but I thought she was fine at the meeting with me having AIDS. Um, and when I told her boss, she went white in the face, couldn't talk um, for at least a minute or so. And then she seemed to be okay, and the vice president, you know, put a big, big bear hug on me. And, and, you know, after the HR rep called in, we talked about me going out on disability. And that week, we had Thursday, we had a one-on-one -on -one phone call, and she bombarded me from the second she, I picked up the phone with every minor thing I'd done wrong in the last year and a half that I'd worked with her or for her. And a lot of things I had not done. And about two minutes into the call, I said, hold it. We can't have this call without HR. I think she was trying to tick me off that I'd you know, blow a gasket and she'd have fired me immediately for insubordination because there was nothing in my record at that point. I finished the project I was working on and I sent it to her and I called her, I was arranged to call her the last day on Friday and she said, this isn't what I wanted. So I think I said, then fix it, I'm done. At the end of six months, HR called me and asked me if I wanted to extend my short-term disability. And I said, no, I want to go on the long-term. Um, one of the benefits of the company I worked for was 10 years of service and greater than 55 and I was 56 at the time. You get health care for life. Five days before they called me and told me what benefits had expired the end of the prior month. So 15 days before I had 10 years of service. I believe it was Regina Carter at Prudential Health called me and told me my benefits had expired 10 days before that. So in essence, Johnson & Johnson and Prudential fired me, fired a man with AIDS. It's coincidence or not, I believe they didn't want to take care of a man with AIDS for the rest of his life. I knew I had to get an attorney. I didn't know where to get one. I interviewed several firms um, and sent each one of them the, the results from the neuropsych tests. And I subsequently won the appeal, um, so I, they made me whole again. Um, but that was 10 months of not knowing how I'm going to pay my mortgage or how I'm going to live. My mother's now 95 years old, and I can't tell her. It would kill her, I think. Um, I did tell my sisters, and. They were uneducated about HIV, and immediately they thought I was dying. Um, but I've educated them, and they know, you know I'm very healthy now. Um, and I've told them where I think I got it from. Um, and I'm 95% sure that, that I got it from Mark. Um, you know, I should have known when I went to his memorial service, you know, five or six years after we had dated, that, that I was at risk. Um, getting my head in the sand. Yeah, I would have been on some of them ugly, nasty drugs and had those wicked side effects, which I avoided. After I was diagnosed, you know, I had to talk to four people and tell them I was positive. And each one of them assured me that um, they were negative. I lived in Rehoboth and there was nobody there who took care of HIV patients. There was a fairly large gay population there. There are no support services at all. Um, I went to see my pastor and. Oh, she called the Gay and Lesbian Community Center to see what was available, which I had already done and knew there was nothing, and she found out the same thing. The guy in Delaware thought I had PML and just told me PML, didn't tell me what it was. I went home, you know, looked it up on the internet and saw a life expectancy of four to eight months. I mean, there's tons in Fort Lauderdale for us. It belonged to Positive Attitudes, which is a support group that's for just HIV positive people who are either infected or affected by the disease. Um, when I was on a tripla, um, I became suicidal. Um, and, you know, I didn't contact my good Dr. Gallant, but my partner did via email. And Dr. Gallant called me and said, Stop taking the tripla. I was in Philadelphia, and, you know, the day after, you know, I considered suicide and you know, woke my partner up at four or five in the morning, you know, scared to death and told him. Um, my plan then was to take the car and run it into a tree. Um, I actually sat in the garage for a couple hours. After you know, that 
attempt, Dr. Gallant, you know, arranged for me to start seeing a, a, a um, psychiatrist at Georgetown. And they diagnosed me then, before I even saw him, as being manic depressive or bipolar. Uh, it never hit the low until about four months ago, middle of the night, 2 a.m., like a freight train coming down the highway, hit me in the head. I just wanted to leave here. I rallied all my health care providers. I was seeing a psychiatrist down here um, and, and an HIV doctor, and I see a therapist once a week. And, you know, I've got the neurologist down here as well. Um, but the psychiatrist, my therapist, and my HIV doctor really rallied. Find someone who can case manage it, who will help you through the process. I did it alone. You're still said to have AIDS instead of you know HIV being just HIV positive, which I, which is all I am now is HIV positive, um, and will be that way until there's a cure, um, which hopefully is down the road. You know I've done a lot for HIV AIDS over the last, you know since 19, even before 1984, um, when I think I was infected with the virus. Um, I did three uh, bike rides. Uh, and, you know, doing the rides, I um, asked, you had to raise money for the rides. And I asked people who were supporting me to send me pictures of loved ones who had died from HIV or AIDS and, and also people who were currently living with the virus. So I put this album together. And my best friend is here who died of AIDS in the late 80s. Um, he was a dentist. He, um, you know, suffered a lot with the, with the virus. Also, I've got a picture of the guy that I think i become kind of HIV positive from. And plus, I've got a picture of my first love here. Um, you know, and I didn't know that several of the people had died until I saw their names at the AIDS quilt. It does, it gives me strength. I mean, I realize there's hope today. Um, we're back, when most of these people died, there wasn't a lot of hope. And I hope everybody in the world who's infected with the virus is part of the cure. Thank you.